Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and today I'm going to be coloring some really darling little monsters from Concord and Knight. I wanted to work with these cute monsters because they are adorable and they have little hearts that they hold. They have little hands in different directions. You can use them, mix and match them like paper dolls. But I also wanted to use the new Pantone colors. I've had a couple people ask me what colors in different mediums that they should use. And notice that each one of these has a little different flavor to it because you're never going to get a pure exact color. However, there's darks and lights within each one of these. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that as I color my monster. Look how dark that brownish color is. That second color in there. Uh, you need colors like that to make things look dimensional. So these are the ones that I've chosen to use for this particular project. And I'm going to do some glazing because none of the colors are exactly perfect. This R02 is pretty good. It's a little bit too orangey. It's not quite as pink as I'd like it to be, but R22 is a little too pink. So I'm going to use the two of them in combination with each other along with some other of the R0 family in order to build up the color and make it look kind of like what I want it to look like. So this one is if you're only going to get one and you're like, I have to have one that's the marker, R02 kind of works in that way. But for shadows, I wanted something that was going to feel like that brown color that Pantone showed in that little color chart. So I chose an E09 because it's a pretty warm kind of brown, warm and red. And I thought it would work really well with the next colors in the sequence, which are going to be the other R0s. I'm going to use R08 and R05. And look at that mug. You can see there's actually lighter pinks and darker pinks, different kinds of colors. There's, you know, you're going to, you're going to get a variety. So whatever, if somebody tells you explicitly that so-and-so is the exact marker that's going to work, it's not going to work if you're trying to make something dimensional because you need a variety to build that up. So I'm building it up with my R08, my R05, and noticing that it's feeling kind of orangey still. It's feeling just a little bit orangey. And so I'm going to use some R22 because that's a little pinker. Remember I said it was a little too pink? Well, when I start using it in combination, it starts to pink this up just a little bit. And the colors on video are not always perfect, but I, trust me that in real life, that R22 makes a big difference. I started getting f feeling like I was getting a little bit dark for my monster, so I used some R00 to push color out. And then I could go back in with my R02 and just do some quick flicks to make everything kind of come together. Put some white pen in his little teeth and his little eyes. And remember that when you put white pen over top of anything red, it doesn't work all that well because it sinks in. That red color is just, it's strong and it bleeds through whatever it wants to bleed through. My little heart had some bleeding in it because I put so much color in my monster that I had to do something with that. So I just used some gray colors to put a haze around the outside of my heart. And it's pushing the color a little bit back out into the monster, but for the most part, it's it's just creating some distraction from the fact that I had some bleeding. So if you have some bleeding, take advantage of it and figure out what's next to it that you can color something with that will cover it up or distract from it. Did a little touch up on my monster himself because he started feeling a little pale as he was drying. And I will go back and do a little more work on that heart to fix a little bit more of that bleeding in just a few minutes. This time I decided to just go right, draw right over top of the little monster's teeth because for goodness sake, I sat there and tried to go around them in the other monster and that was useless effort. And I'm gonna make this little guy blue greens. But what I started realizing is I wanted more of a green green. And since I was talking about glazing, which is putting a light color of one shade over top of another color to kind of change the overall tone of it, I can do that with this little guy too. So I can take a YG00 and add it to that BG01 and 15 and make a whole new color. This is not a color that exists in Copic Marker, so it's kind of fun. So I'm going to add a little bit more white pen. Now here's where I'm going to do a little fixing on that heart. 
I put a line around there, a line of the white. And while it's still wet, before it dries completely, I'm going to take my finger and just pull that color down a little bit. So it's going to create a little softer white rather than just having a line, a, a solid line of white, especially since I have that gray color in the heart itself. So that's a little tip for you. So now we've got the, uh, the blue green that I'm going to finish on his legs. And here's another tip that instead of trying to color each and every one of those in every layer that you do, just color the whole thing first in your, your lighter color and then go in with your darker color and just go right over top of it. There's no reason to make yourself try to get your tiny markers, your, your marker nibs into those tiny areas. And then I'm adding a shadow over the whole thing and creating some of that dimension. And then I decided to throw a little bit of that yellow green color in the other stripes to bring that in harmony with everything else. And then I wanted a little more bright color on his little face. So I just did some touch up on it. The balloon. Now I want to show you a really easy way to make your balloon look like it's all shiny and squishy and full of air because you can take my Copic glass class and learn how to make things really look shiny. But this is a way that you can do it with just a lot of squishy marker. So I've put a couple of areas around the balloon that create a little bit of that, that round shape. But the big secret here is going to be to just put a lot of marker down and they're all very similar colors. So I'm just going to keep coloring over them until they start to soften and mush together. And I'm going to see if I can leave a few areas with a hard edge and some with a soft edge. It's going to look almost watercolory when it's done, but it's a way to make it look like it's this really fun balloon up in the air with a bunch of different reds in it. And I didn't really have to draw shine and shimmer into it. My monsters need a little somewhere to stand, so I'm going to give them a little bit of ground and pretend I haven't really worked on a light source here, but I'm pretending the light is off to the right just a little bit, so the shadow casts more off to the left. And that little part on the right is the shadow of the balloon. Add a little bit darker color right underneath of the monsters, because shadows are actually not all one color, they're multiple colors, and they get lighter as they get away from the object. And then smooth out some of the edges and lighten some of that. So there is my little monster card. Very, very simple on here with a double sentiment because there's lots of sentiments in this stamp set. And I just rounded the corners with my corner jumper. I did another one where they're just peeking in from the bottom and they say we're the cutest because they apparently have no humility whatsoever. And my third one, I made the, the little guy, the little blue and green guy, hold the heart up in the air and I had to draw his arms in myself and then I drew a little triangle underneath the flowers so that my other little guy could hold a little pack of flowers to give to somebody. So there's my fun little crazy cards. Hope you enjoyed these. There's of course, as always, still pictures on the blog and the colors are over there, etc. So you can check that out with the link in the doobly-doo. Hit the like button, subscribe if you have not yet, and I will see you all very, very soon. Have a great day.